My, that certainly does sound like an eventful encounter. Still no trace of canon, though, and the delusion remains unnullified. Yeah, because we weren't allowed to nullify it. We were basically thrown out. <sighs> I'm sure it was simply too precious a place. She wanted no one to encroach upon it. So are you saying we should just leave it be? Not exactly. I'm just thinking out loud here. One person can never truly get in the head of another. A person's feelings are all her own, and hers alone. And the truest of those feelings are hidden away, deep in the recesses of her heart. What are our options, then? Is there nothing we can... Yes, it's true that one can never know another's true feelings. However, that doesn't mean you can't try, right? Try? Why is she smiling? Why is she sad? Why is she crying? Each of these is a reaction, is it not? It stands to reason there's a reason for each one. So, aura of mystery aside, you're saying we never really understood how Katomi felt. Or maybe never even tried to. If only we could get a better idea of what's going on in her head. She's not exactly rolling out the red carpet, though, is she? But that doesn't mean there's no way in. Isn't there someone who knows all there is to know about Katomi? You mean Yoshino? Not a girl. Yoshino and Katomi were practically inseparable. Oh man, why didn't I think of that? Great idea. Let's just find Yoshino and ask her all about Katomi. And then do what with that information? Well, we could... If we learn that Katomi needs her delusion, do we just give up on nullifying it? deflate the bubble or not to deflate? It's a big question. So why not wait till you know more to answer it? Your first step should simply be to get to the heart of the problem. Get to know the girl, then decide what to do. Get to know her, huh? Are you okay, Saki? Oh, no, it's nothing. Do you have any idea where we could find Yoshino at this time of day? Hmm. You might have some luck looking for her on Junk Street. Understood. Thank you very much. Before you go, though, Saki, I'd just like you to bear one thing in mind. While you seek to destroy delusions, and Katomi seeks only to embrace hers, you two are more alike than you might admit. Huh? Oh, hey. Okay, Spill, what are you buying? I've never seen an otaku eyeball Romanda Rake that hard without something in mind. I'm not eyeballing anything. Just remembered an errand I've got to take care of. An errand, huh? Damn it. Tell me, my dear Yamato. Tell me the object of thy desire, and together, the two of us shall make it a reality. I told you, I'm not buying anything for myself here. Oh, sure you aren't. So what say we go pay Fosmap a little visit? Why? Because you obviously are looking for something. I am not. But if you're so desperate to go to Fosmap that you'd construct such a lie, then fine. I'll babysit you. Alrighty, now we're getting somewhere. Off we go!
We made it, Yamato. Now go, be free, bask in the fields of otaku goods and electronics. You're the one who wanted to come here. Right, so I guess that means you'll be waiting outside for me then? I guess I'll come in. So, did you find it? Did I find what? Whatever you'd parked yourself in front of the anime Blu-ray section the whole time to find. That must have been your imagination. Oh, my imagination, right. Well, whatever. I'm not judging. I saw you hanging around the anime Blu-rays yourself. What do you end up buying? Just a box set of Mobile Engineer Force tech in the shell, that's all. For real? Oh, you've heard of it? I mean, I guess. Bunch of engineering students with robots or whatever? Yeah, exactly. I totally dig the scene in episode three when they first mobilize. It gets you crazy pumped. Oh, give me a break. Everyone says that. Ugh, no one ever gets what that show is really about. Listen up, Tachibana. The real heart of Meph Tits is in the final half of the second to last episode. You know, the infamous episode 11 with the space monster invasion. You'd think the Force would team up and take him out, but not in Meph Tits. Oh no, the monsters break through and manage to destroy everything. The heroes are done. But they keep fighting all through the credit sequence and into the next episode preview, and all for naught. Then episode 12 rolls around, and it's 6,000 years later. Humanity's had to wait for a new generation of hero. That hits the audience like a sucker punch. Where do you go after the devastation of Earth? The future! Genius! I mean, I had to scrape my chop off the floor with a spatula. You're quite the fan. You bet I am not. My older brother watches it, so I just catch bits of it whenever he has it on. That's all. Very believable. Anyways, we've got some more looking to do. There's another FOSS map around here just waiting for us. Huh, I got nothing better to do. So our search begins. Go on ahead. I'll be out. Yeah, yeah. But did I mention this place has an entire corner dedicated to the work of famed director Osamu Hikida? They what? Who knows? A place like this might even have something hard to find. I've changed my mind. I think I will head in there after all. <laughs> There's a rare smile. I take it you found what you were looking for? I wasn't looking for anything, so... Please. Then what's in that shopping bag hanging from your arm? What did you get? Show me the money! Hey! Let go! Hee hee hee! 